Scott Foster. The, that one, that, that's one of those games last night. We'll get to what it means and why. If you watched the first half of LeBron and the Lakers and didn't watch the second half, you'd be amazed when you click on the TV and go away. The, the, the Lakers came back and won that game, and LeBron actually looked great in it. Um, but there was a little bit of Kings Lakers Game Six Western Conference Finals to it. Um, so uh, just kind of an amazing, amazing night. I want to start though with a story which can, continues to kind of ripple through the world of sports. Uh, two nights ago, there was Duke versus North Carolina, and. It was as hyped a regular season game as we, we feel like we've had in a long time in college basketball. And there's a couple reasons to it. One, let's not bury the lead. We haven't seen a kid like Zion Williamson. Have we seen breakthrough college freshmen? Absolutely. But have we seen breakthrough college freshmen that are six foot six, 285 pounds, that jump the way that he jumps, plays as hard as the way he plays? Like, no, it, it feels like something a little bit different. And then he's a dookie who you like. Like, that's a little bit different. Um, you combine that with the fact they're taking on North Carolina. It's the best rivalry in the sport of, uh, of college basketball. A and, you know, traditionally they've had great ra ratings anyway. And then you factor in that ESPN smartly moved it to a later date than normally they played. It was the latest they'd ever played. And it was the last day before the big boys came back to play. And then you had former President Obama, who's courtside. Like, you factor all these things in, and I don't know anyone who considers themselves a sports fan that didn't have something, family or a date, that wasn't at least watching, just curiosity. 30 seconds in, he blows a tire, and it wasn't just that he ripped his shoe. I mean, the entire bottom of the shoe rips off. I mean, it looked like some L.A. gear he was wearing. And then the pundits start throwing things out, and former players start ripping the NCAA. Zion limps off. He misses the rest of the game with a sprained knee, and we collectively lose our mind. Yesterday, we found out that Zion Williamson just has a mild knee sprain, which is what it looked like. Thankfully, kid's going to be fine. They're going to play Syracuse this weekend. There's another side to that where Jim Beheim, the Hall of Fame head coach at Syracuse, after beating Louisville on the same night, uh, mistakenly hit a guy and killed him in a car. Like, it is... So much bad come, come from a night which could be so, so good in celebrating the sport. And, you know, I was watching TNT last night. Uh, if you watch Fox Sports 1, you know I got a chance to co-host First Things First the last four days. And I, I flew through Minneapolis and actually called a college basketball game on radio last night, Minnesota versus Michigan. I, I get to the airport, getting ready to fly home, and I watch Charles Barkley. And he kind of nailed it. Like, I, I want to get to, there's a proposal that's being made, which seems inevitable, which they're going to open back up uh, the chance for kids to come straight out of high school and go to the NBA. I'll tell you what I think about that and why I think it's actually bad for the sport. I also think it will completely change how you'll ever think about the idea of compensating players for their name and likeness and anything above scholarship and cost of attendance once you get to college. But, but Barkley nailed something in, in a way in which only he is able to do. Like, look, Chuck sometimes goes off on divergent paths. Sometimes it becomes a, a giggle fest of, you know, inside the NBA. They, they get it, it, At times, Shaq kind of takes over, and they, it's like a standoff of bravado, and Shaq shows off his rings. And he almost like, dude, if you guys want to unzip your pants and, and see who's more of a man, like, go do that off camera. When you guys just talk, you're really interesting. But college basketball is supposed to be fun. Do, do colleges make money off of the games that are broadcast? Yeah, they do. Uh, here's a news flash. I don't know if you know this. Colleges make money off of all of their students. <laughs> off the back of all their students, they do. And they don't pay taxes on it. And then they ask for more money from their alums based upon the success of their students who become alums. And then once you graduate, then they want some more money. But that's just the way... Part of it is they're getting less and less money from the state if they're a public institution. Part of it is if they're a private institution, this is how they got to continue to generate and grow their endowment. And part of it is just kind of the nature of how their business works. But we, we operate under this, somehow it's sinister, 
for colleges to make money off of basketball and football players. And by the way, the reality of it is they make a lot more money off football than they do off basketball, you know. And the football money that is made is not actually made by the NCAA. The basketball money that's made by the NCAA is made off the NCAA tournament. And that's simply because everybody I know and everybody you know fills out a tournament bracket. <laughs> that's, that's where the real money is. The volume of sports, the logo across the front of the chest. Look, Zion Williamson played made for, made for basketball events against LaMelo Ball that was, you know, no one could get into a gym in Las Vegas. But it, it, it wasn't a happening on TV until he played for Duke and they played North Carolina. There's a power to that brand. There's value to that brand. But more than anything, I was blown away and kind of embarrassed for many of my brethren in the media and a lot of former players who has said that Zion Williamson should shut it down. Now, for the record, shutting it down does not mean if the kid's hurt, he doesn't play. That's different. Shutting it down means healthy scratch. And we've seen shutting it down. That's what Kawhi Leonard was accused of doing last year. That's what, what Anthony Davis was basically accused of doing before the All-Star break when he <clears throat> hurt his shoulder. And the, and the Pelicans are trying to figure out what to do with him. A healthy scratch to a kid who's 18 years old who tweaked his knee. Like, when did playing basketball become some dangerous endeavor like, like being a middle linebacker or running back or a wide receiver in football? Right? Like, do, do I want him to get hurt? No. Do I think that he's injured? No. And if he's healthy, should he play? Yes. Why? Because you're a basketball player. You came to Duke to play basketball. If you wanted to simply be a professional... He could have, even before the proposed rule change, he could have gone to the G League. He could have benefited off his name and likeness and had a shoe deal. He could have thrown down dunks, and we wouldn't have seen or watched all uh, games. The level of competition or the level of talent is actually better in the G League than in his college basketball, but it doesn't have the names across the front of the chest. It doesn't have the coaches. It doesn't have the arenas. It doesn't have the field. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the fun. Like, look, college basketball is fun. I've played it. It's the best. It's just, it is exactly what you think it is. It's the best year to five or six, what was it, Chris Farley, seven years of your life. You're playing with a bunch of dudes who you live around, who you grew up around. It's your first chance to be away from home. You're playing for an old crotchety coach and trying to figure out how to kind of fit in, how to grow up. And then you win, you lose, you go out afterwards. And whether you have a beer or you have a soda or you have a Gatorade or whatever, you're hanging out playing video games. Like, it's exactly what you think it is. And just like youth sports is ruined by kids, we are trying to ruin college sports. Excuse me, youth sports is ruined for kids by adults. It's the same thing that's happening with college athletics. We are ruining it because we're getting away from the core of what's about. Here's Charles Barkley last night inside the NBA. When did we ever get to the point where all people care about is money? Shaq played college for two years. Three. Three. Kenny played for four. I played for three. Michael Jordan played for three. Tim Duncan played for four. David Robinson played for four. Some of the greatest players ever. Wilt Chamberlain, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson played. When we get to the point where you got clowns on television saying, oh, don't play. That's what you do, Ernie. That's what we do. We play basketball. I mean, I, I, I don't ever want to see anybody get hurt. This kid looked like he's going to be a fantastic player. But I get so mad when people like act like money is the only thing that matters in the world. Like, oh, dude, you're going to go in the NBA. Don't play. I mean, that's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. It, it is like you're, you're protect. We, I want you to protect your asset in by, uh, Zion Williamson because I want it to, him to profit off it. But like not play basketball, not experience arguably the greatest three weeks in all of sports. Why would you wish that upon somebody? Either way, he's going to make a ridiculous amount of money. You're like, no, he's not. Yeah, Nerlens Noel tore his ACL, and he was still a top five pick. Joel Embiid was a top five pick, and no one knew what he would be. Cy Williamson will be fine, and the likelihood of an additional injury, if he's fine, is slight at best. But we're not even talking about injury. We're, we're talking, you got guys like Boogie Cousins who played in college basketball, and the cut that's being used today is Boogie saying that college basketball is BS, and he wouldn't have him play, kind of buried in that cut. Is Boogie Cousins saying this? I love my experience in college. That was some of the best years of my life playing basketball. But with that being said, just how crooked the whole NCAA business is. And I actually saw a post the other day 
or it was, I think the highest ticket for that UNC Duke game was twenty five, thirty five hundred dollars. How much does Zion win? That's who they're coming to see. So how much of that is he getting? Actually, who does it go to? How does it benefit any player on that team that is able to get twenty dollars in a free meal? They're this bad kid. They get a, they get a bad rep. Uncoachable, uh, thugs, whatever the case may be. So it's bull. It's been bull. Well, just just to be fair, and I actually have had dinner with Boogie Cousins, and I like him a great deal, and he's a, a bright guy who's going through his own kind of process of evolution. And he was a pain in the ass, and that's why he got run out of Sacramento. And that's why what they, they were better when he got hurt in New Orleans, is he has gotten better and evolved as a person. I'm, and no one has ever said a guy's a bad kid for getting $20 in a meal. By the way, the whole idea of, of anyone not eating in college is complete BS to anyone who's ever been a college athlete. No one, the hungry Huskies thing uh, that, that UConn lived on is a joke. It's a lie. And by the way, the NCAA is not crooked. Do, do I think they're always aligned with the goal of what's best in the mind of the student athlete? No, there's some conflicting alliances, but... They actually show you exactly where all the money goes. He's talking about the secondary ticket market, which doesn't go to Duke basketball. It doesn't go to Duke athletics. It goes to the secondary ticket market. Just focus on the part that he said, best time of my life. Because you're just playing back. It's about the sport. Because the sport is supposed to be fun. That's why sports were designed. To work out, get a little aerobic activity, like that was the whole idea of basketball and Dr. James Naismith in, invented it as a PE coach for competition. And then to get a group of guys together, you live together, you eat together, you sleep together, you work out together, you win together, you lose together. And you start at the start of the year and you end at the end of the year. And if you're fortunate enough, if you're lucky enough to win four games, you get to play in front of 75,000 people. And even the guys that have turned so bitter on the NCAA, because that's what we do, we're bitter on any sort of organizing group, Congress, the NFL, maybe not the NBA because Adam Silver bows to their every whim. We get away from the idea that, like you're a basketball player, you get a chance to play basketball, finish the season, have fun, and the ancillary benefit of having success in college, just like any student, is you get a kick-ass first job. And that's what's going to happen with Zion Williamson after just one year at Duke. Start with what it's all about. And by the way, yesterday, there's an NBA proposal, and it feels like it's inevitable that they're going to change the, change the age requirement from 19 to 18. Uh, let me just explain something to people, that you've always been able to come out, go overseas, or play in the G League if you wanted. Now, you know, in a couple years, you'll be able to go straight from high school to the pros. There is 0.00001% chance that college will ever compensate players for their name and likeness, which isn't actually that valuable without the, the name across the front of the chest from that point forward. Why? Because if you want to be a professional, you're allowed to. You're allowed to remove yourself from school at any point in time, high school, college, and go to be a pro. And that's what the NCAA will say. That's not what we're about. We're about having fun. We're about giving people a chance at an education, putting people in a room full of other students that they would never would have a chance to meet because of the massive uh, inequalities in education in our society. And, and it, it offers a wellspring of opportunities after you're done playing basketball, after you're done in college. But God bless Charles Barkley, man. All these people, I just, especially guys that are former athletes. Don't play. Sit out. Get ready for the NBA. Like, well, if you sit out, you're going to be working out. And you could get hurt working out. You got a chance once in a lifetime to play for a national championship with arguably the greatest college coach in the history of the sport with a couple of other guys that you live around, that you eat around, that you sleep around. And because people say your paycheck might be slightly larger, if you don't play, you should do it. You tell me a problem that's been solved by money, and I'll give you 15 problems that have been caused by money. Was it just a win for the Lakers last night, or it actually means something? Well, Joy Taylor, I'm done.